Hello everyone, only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use an upgradable geothermal generator uh, to get a lot of power relatively early to mid-game. Uh, now I get asked very, very often, how do I power all of the things in my Sky Factory first? Or what, what, what power source do I prefer? And I like the upgradable geothermal for several different reasons, and we're going to cover that. And if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button. So that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. All right. So a few things we're going to need for this setup. Uh, we're going to start with the cobblestone generator. So cobblestone generator is going to be six pieces of cobblestone, a piece of glass, water bucket, and a lava bucket. That's for a tier one. We're going to start with today. But there are other versions of that which will produce cobblestone faster if we look down here ji you'll see there's the traditional then there's tier two which is iron then there is a uh, tier three tier four and tier five the higher tier cobblestone generator you get the faster you're going to produce power so while you don't have to have the tier five to start off i do recommend upgrading to that as soon as you are able to next we're going to use a cauldron it's going to be seven pieces of iron you're going to need two of these next is going to be an automated user just three pieces of obsidian one magma block two gold ingots and a dispenser you're going to need a simple geothermal generator and that's going to use up one of those cauldrons we made four pieces of stone two magma blocks a furnace and a block of redstone Next, we're going to make the upgradable geothermal generator, the one we're going to use. And that's going to use that first one we just made. You're also going to use four modifier components. Now, these generators don't use upgrades per se. They use modifiers. So when doing a search for them, you have to use modifier and not upgrades or you won't find them. But a modifier component is going to be four black concrete powders, four redstone, and an iron block. Of this entire setup, making the uh, upgrade, the modifier upgrades are going to be some of the more expensive components. You'll need four of those with your simple geothermal to make your upgradable geothermal. And then there are the speed modifiers themselves, which is one of those modifier components, four gold ingots, and four redstone. All right, let's talk about the setup. Go ahead and grab those first. Couple things we're going to use outside of that. Of course, we use a torch. We use different type of uh, cables. I'm going to primarily be using cyclic in this one. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put down your cobblestone generator. That's the first block. And on top of that, you're going to put your automated user. I can see that on one side of the automated user, there's a black circle. That's the front. On the front of that, you want to put your cauldron. Under that, you want to go ahead and put a torch because our cauldron's where our lava is going to be. Then we're going to put our upgradable geothermal on top of our original automated user. The last component for the setup here is going to be one fluid extraction cable. We're going to put that on top of the cauldron going into the upgradable geothermal. So here's how the process works. Cobblestone automatically feeds up into the automated user. This block does not need power. The automated user will put cobblestone in the cauldron, which will make lava, which will then go into the geothermal, produce power, which at the same time will provide power to our automated user. So this setup here, once started, will run itself pretty much forever. Now, to get started, as you can see, nothing's happening yet. Okay? It won't start automatically because there's no power in here to run the user. So we have to kickstart it. Now, I'm going to warn ahead of time, this can get kind of loud. Go ahead and grab the cobblestone that's out of there right now. Okay? Now, again, this is why I recommend using a tier five. As you can see, the cobblestone's coming in, but it's providing at a relatively slow rate. If we were to go get a cobblestone generator tier five, for example, replace that, you're going to see almost an immediate difference in the amount of cobblestone that comes in. So the higher tier of your generator, the more lava this is going to produce faster. So you want as high a tier as you can possibly make. Now, I will warn you, once we kickstart this, it will get loud. So that can be annoying for some folks. You may want to use some type of noise suppression. There are several different ones you can use. I'm a big fan of the, uh, fan of the sound muffler. Set a sound muffler down. It makes no noise. We'll do that in a minute once I show you how this works. So to kickstart it, you're just going to start feeding some cobblestone into the cauldron until it, you hear it kick in. 
air gun. It's automatically feeding it. As you can it's very, very loud. Sounds muffler will silence everything in an eight block radius. I use them every time I build one of these, and they're not very hard to make. So if we look up here, we see that our component is completely full of lava, our geothermal generator, and it is producing power. Now, right now, the power that it's making is filling up our user, and then once that is full, it'll start overflowing into here. Now, to make this process work at its best pace, get the most amount of power possible. Pop those out of here, and we're going to grab these. These are the speed modifiers. This is why I like the upgradable versions of any of the generators, because they will accept these modifiers in these four slots, and they will increase your speed capacity again horrendously. Look how fast the power is going up there. Now, you have too many of these and uh, too weak of a cobblestone generator. Again, the system will eventually go slower or, or just stop moving until it gets more cobblestone. Again, another reason to have highest tier cobblestone generator and as many upgrades as possible right now this is full pretty much so that means that this system has produced all the power it can you see it's a decent amount of rf right in there so that right there is an upgradable geothermal generator on an infinite lava loop and this is what i primarily power every minecraft world that i build with because as you saw it was not hard to make the only real expensive components were the speed modifiers, and that's just because there's a lot of iron, gold, and black concrete can take a little while to make. But other than that, this is a very easy setup, and now it's done. It's going to keep producing power as long as I need it to. If I get to the point where this is no longer producing enough power, I just build a second one and a third one. They're not hard to build, and the further on you get in the game, the easier they are. Now, to get our power out of our upgradable geothermal, there's a couple different ways we can look at. First, we'll start with our cyclic option. Of course, that we can go ahead and just put an energy extraction cable. I recommend cranking it up to max. And then you can just read and you can just attach energy cables to that, running it to any machine you want. The other option is you can have that running to an energy transfer node and use GPS units, crank that all the way up, use GPS units to link to any type of machine, battery, or powered item that you need. That is an option. After cyclic, of course, you can also use flux the same way. So if you want to go ahead and just slap a flux plug on the side of that and create yourself your own network, let's see if we can create one here. Yeah. Nothing running? It is. Okay, good stuff. So, well, mine's encrypted. That's why it's not creating it. But um, I'm going to throw my password in right now. But yes, you can put a flux uh, plug on there and then use flux points anywhere and run this over a flux network. So you can use it wired or two different ways of wireless to transfer power out of your geothermal. And that'll work on any of the simple generators as well. Um, but this will pr produce a large amount of power. A great way to know whether it's time to make another one is to look at this bar on the right. If it's staying full, and that means you're producing more power than is being pulled out of the system. That starts dropping down and is having a time staying full. It's struggling. It may be time to make another one because at that point, you're pulling out more power than this is producing. But that's not easy to do. Um, on my most uh, recent playthrough of Sky Factory 4, I ran everything that I built the entire game off of four of these setups. And the last one was really redundant. I built it just while I was building number three because it was easy. So it allowed extra. I probably could have run everything off three. But this is the preferred power method that I use. Now, in no way am I saying that this is the best power method, nor am I saying that it creates the most amount of power. There are a lot of things that can do way more power than this. But when you look at the amount of time it takes to build your power network, the amount of materials it takes to build it, for, for my money, this is the best bang for your buck. Again, it's not that hard to make. You can make it relatively early to early mid game. You can just repeat them as often as you need. And the best of all, now that it's set up, I never have to touch it again. This will make power forever. It's auto fueled and it's running itself. So this is the power method that I preferably use. Again, in no way am I saying it's the best, but I do find it the best bang for your buck. All right, good deal.
Uh, so that's going to do us for this tutorial. If you have any questions about this tutorial, any of my tutorials, please be sure to put those down in the comments section. I will do my very best to get back with you as soon as I can, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com, and at the bottom of the homepage is a place where you can go and uh, submit feedback, questions, uh, or recommendations via email. As well as while you're there, you'll find my streaming schedule, links to all my tutorials and videos, uh, links to all my social media accounts, as well as the ODG store, where you can get some cool Only Draven gaming merchandise. So I do recommend checking out the website. A lot of great resources there. That is going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.